Hey, welcome to Sci-Fi Secrets. First off, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that subbed. It really means a lot to me. When I started this channel, I honestly thought I would just be talking to myself, which would have been fine. I'm doing this because I like to, but the fact all of you like it too makes it even better. All of your interest in sci-fi and my channel in specific has blown me away. Thanks everyone. I couldn't be happier with my channel's growth over the last few months. So as a thank you, I went out and bought a better mic, if you can't already tell. I hope it was worth it. I'm sure you guys will let me know. All right, now on to the video. Okay, spoilers warning. I will be assuming that you've already read Rendezvous with Rama, or have at least watched my full summary of Rendezvous with Rama videos before watching this. I will also have some random details about the sequels that you may consider to be spoilers in this video. So if you are dead set on reading the sequels and don't want any spoilers, then this video is not for you. You have been warned. Alright, so I wanted to do a video on Rendezvous with Rama's sequels, but it's been over a decade since I'd read them. In my memory, they were decent sequels. The only issue I remember off the top of my head was how it always bothered me that in the original book, one of the most mind-blowing parts to me was when Rama just went on its way, completely ignoring mankind. When you've read and seen dozens if not hundreds of stories of the aliens coming because of mankind to kill us for our resources, or for our water, or for our planet, or then there was always the books where they came to say hi and we attacked them, dooming ourselves. So your mind is so primed by the time it reads Rama just to assume that Rama's there because of us. Then after about 250 pages of buildup, it just leaves and your mind is left stunned with so many questions. The first time I finished reading Rendezvous, I just sat there for a good hour or so thinking, lost in my head. I was so desperate for answers that I immediately went down to the library and checked out Rama 2 the next day after school. Keep in mind I had no clue about the background of the book at this time, why it was written, how it was co-authored while Rendezvous was not, the time gap between Rendezvous and Rama 2. I just assumed that it was the planned sequel. Or, at the very least, it was like the Ringworld sequels, where Larry Niven may have not planned for it originally, but it was in his universe and he was already expanding that universe in other books and short stories. So the Ringworld sequels were almost completely in line with the original. Rama 2, however, would never have been made if not for Gentry Lee. You see, Gentry Lee was working at the JPL. He actually still does, by the way, as Chief Engineer for the Solar System Exploration Directorate. Quite a mouthful. So there's no denying that Lee is a very smart man, and because of that big brain, he was introduced to Arthur C. Clarke. You see, he had read Rendezvous with Rama and had an idea for the sequels. But as an aspiring author myself, I can tell you that an idea you're excited about and how it comes out on paper in the end are two entirely different things. And it's very hard to keep your own universe's rules straight, let alone someone else's. So as I said, teenage me, not knowing anything about this, just dove right into Rama 2. And once I was invested in that, I just kept going. Garden of Rama, Rama Revealed, Bright Messengers, Double Full Moon Night. I got so invested in the family that I totally forgot about the original, and never noticed that most of the original mysteries of Rendezvous with Rama were never answered. At least not how I wanted them to be. Instead, a different storyline was pasted over the top of them, and they were basically made to be moot points. But as the years went by, my memory of Rendezvous stayed strong, while my memories of the rest faded away. I've reread Rendezvous a few times since it's a somewhat short book compared to what I'm used to, but I never reread the sequels. I always felt like Rendezvous was great just as a standalone, and it's easy to read 250 pages, while rereading five more novels, or three at the minimum, all 400 or so pages long was a much bigger time investment that I always decided was better spent on new books. But then, after more than a decade, I reread the sequels, and I was honestly shocked. How did I miss this the first time? Where Rendezvous was a hard sci-fi about an amazing, awe-inspiring alien spaceship, Rama 2 was a fantasy adventure about a woman named Nicole. When I was a teen, I had read enough books by that time to know that some books just love to drag out the story before getting to the good stuff. I had never been a fan of that type of writing, but I still always refused to skip a single page. I'm not that same person anymore. This time I just wanted to get to the secrets of Rama. I ended up speed reading through about 215 pages of my copy before I stopped and actually started to read in a relaxed, enjoyable way. Almost the entire book of Rendezvous before getting back to Rama. <laughs> like I said, Rendezvous is only about 250 pages long. And even then I was a bit disappointed. 
The more I read, the more I realized that this was not Rama. This was a cheap facsimile of Rama. This Rama was not built by Arthur C. Clarke, it was built by Gentry Lee. And where Clarke made me feel that everything in Rama had three copies for triple redundancy, and therefore all three Ramas coming to the solar system should all look and act exactly the same, Gentry Lee's Ramas were three slightly different spaceships without triple redundancy. Now this might not seem like a big deal at first, but in Rendezvous, this struck me as Rama is perfected tech from a race that has had the time and ability to know what the perfect solution is every time. And then they tripled it. <laughs> this machine is built to last. It's built to never fail. It's built to survive anything. They are prepared. In Rama 2, I more got the feeling that Rama's tech was not perfected. They were still fiddling around with it. Where the engineers that built Rama said, we know what's right, there is no doubt. Rama 2's creator said, maybe this Rama style will survive while the other does not. We don't know. Let's send both. Plus one more. <laughs> and that to me just takes away so much of the magic of Rama. It makes its whole mission questionable to me. But then the Rama sequels have a solution for that. They give Rama a purpose. We find out pretty definitively in the beginning of Garden of Rama that Rama came for humanity. We find this out because once out of the solar system, Rama starts to accelerate to over 0.5c, or half the speed of light. The first Rama didn't need to slingshot past the sun. Rama 2 achieves greater speeds than that on its own, which was my original problem with the sequels way back when I first read them. Rama's purpose is us in the sequels. It ruins the ending of Rendezvous where Clark spat that cliche right back in your face and leaves you sitting there stunned. Instead, it's just another alien story, like so many others. Aliens wanted to hang out with the so cool humans. Who wouldn't want to hang out with us? We are so badass after all, right? <sighs> but wait, that means in the sequels, Rama has more tech than in the original because it's got better engines but the changes in Rama's triplicate backups make it seem less advanced. Then there are the missiles that almost destroy it in the sequel. Well, it basically flies right through the sun in the original and had what appeared to be an asteroid impact on the side that all it did was leave a skid mark. Seems like Rama 1 was more durable and made with maxed out tech, or at least maxed out for what the Rendezvous universe would allow. Well, the second is faster, but tech is still evolving meaning that the physics in Rama 2's universe allow for much more than they do in Rendezvous' universe. Which is bore out in Rama Revealed and Bright Messengers when the Ramans themselves say that they are still researching many things. Personally, I prefer Rama 1's universe. I, I like the more limited physics. I don't like physics to be whatever you want them to be. But speaking about the sun, Apparently Rama 1 sucking up the energy from the sun was just a trick to make humans think they could land on Rama, which they had already done. So I guess that's a retcon that didn't really work out. You see, they state in Garden of Rama that Rama 1 went slow through the solar system to allow humans to intercept it. Even though they state that Rama was the fastest thing to ever travel through the solar system at the end of that book, but whatever, let's ignore that. So anyway, the whole first visit was supposedly a ploy to make humanity land on Rama. But the last thing that Rama 1 does as it leaves the solar system is suck up energy from the sun. Well, Rama 2 changes its course to intercept the Earth instead of the sun. And after the Earth fires missiles at Rama, it just dips out of the solar system without ever sucking up any energy from the sun. Then, once out of the solar system, it accelerates to over 0.5c, doing 10 g's in acceleration without needing that recharge. Which, okay, so the cylindrical sea is frozen again at that point, but ice is not steel. And billions of tons of ice, supported by nothing but itself, faced with 10 Gs, would almost certainly break into giant chunks that would fly to the south pole of Rama with force and speed that the 500 meter tall cliffs would never stop. Half of the frozen sea would be on the southern cylindrical plains. So this is what I mean when I say that from Rama 2 on, it's fantasy. Rendezvous was hard sci-fi, that the only thing in the entire book that wasn't explained by common sense and known physics was the reactionless drive. But even that gave you the impression that it took the furthest limits of physics to make it work. Even the Ramans, with their massive knowledge, could only make it work with a 5 kilometer or 8 kilometer in Rama 2, long spike that threw off mile-long lightning bolts and made a dangerous ionic wind. 
In Garden of Rama, by the way, they use that as just a warning system. It seems to have nothing to do with Rama's propulsion, which is strange because we learned that in Rendezvous, the lights can already be a warning system when they directed the Biots to the sea. Seems to me like that would be a plenty good warning system. Or even just flash the lights a few times. Why use dangerous lightning that could kill anything in its vicinity? Not to mention the massive amount of power that it's wasting. But let's talk about the plot itself. The first 300 pages are mostly about meeting your new heroine as she solves a murder mystery. Turns out one crew member slipped in other drugs. Which would be a totally fine storyline in any other book. It does lead to a murder mystery after all. But the only purpose to this storyline being in Rama 2 that I could see seemed to be to drive home the idea that this Rama is different. An idea I personally hate. Then there are the bird people with their monomelons, an underground lair in New York, and let's not forget the octa spiders and human biots. Honestly, just why? The whole thing just feels wrong to me. It also gives you a clue that Rom has not been traveling for 200,000 plus years, which we find out for certain in Garden of Rama. Again, Gentry, why? Why are you making Rama less amazing? The thought that it just randomly happened through our solar system on its way to its ultimate goal is mind boggling. First off, it means that the creators cared about what happens that far in the future. It brings up all kinds of questions about their species. How long do they live? How far ahead did they plan? Was this forced? Was this a last ditch effort to save their race? Or is 200,000 plus years really not that bad of shipping times in their minds? Is the galaxy just that populated that this wasn't that amazing of a coincidence? Or was this really a one in a hundred billion chance? It honestly made me wonder if the galaxy was just full of aliens shipping their stuff like this. So as much as I would love to tell you that you should run out and get Rama 2 right after you finish Rendezvous like I did, I just can't in good faith. I feel that what I should tell you is to not go read Rama 2, at least not as if it were the sequels to Rendezvous. If you want to read it, it's a fine story in its own right, which is one of the most frustrating parts for me. By itself, it's a good story, but as a sequel to Rama, it's just plain bad. It's not the sequel to Rama that anyone wanted. Just look at some of the comments under my first Rendezvous video for proof. It seems this is an overwhelmingly popular feeling that we all share. I didn't want to say anything. I like being positive on this channel, but comment after comment all said the same things I was already feeling upon rereading Rama 2. It's just not a good sequel. It's a good story, but only if you can accept that it's not happening in the same universe as Rendezvous. One of the final lines of Rendezvous keeps popping into my head over the last few days as I've been thinking about this. The Ramans do everything in threes. Or, or something close to that. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually go and look it up again, even though the book's sitting right next to me right now. So yeah, that's how lazy I'm feeling. Anyway, so I hope some author out there takes this as his opening to make the third Rama come into the solar system, and then they can do Rendezvous the justice that it deserves. So anyway, let me know what you think. How do you feel about the sequels? If you didn't like them, would you agree that they would be better as their own series apart from Rendezvous, or did you just not like them? Should I do a summary of the sequels, or is it not worth the time? Let me know your opinions. And thanks for listening. I really hope to see you guys back here for the next video. Take care.